Okay, we're gonna be grilling a, a boneless prime rib. My neighbor bought this. Bone in is always better, but it's still gonna be yummy. And uh, I'm looking forward to making it. Uh, 4826 uh, prime rib, Angus premium choice. So when you get one, you really wanna get one with the bone. So, all right, very expensive, forty-eight twenty-six. I guess not real bad, eight ninety-seven a pound. Um, so I'm gonna take it out of the package here, pat it dry, and then I'm gonna coat it with softened butter, garlic paste, and hatch green chili, hatch chili seasoning, garlic parmesan garlic jalapeno all right let's get to that i've let this sit out for about an hour and a half so that it gets to room temperature before i put it on the grill might be able to do this without making a big mess that'd be something special dry so that the butter spice concoction um, adheres to the beef. So I probably let it sit open like this out of its juices oh, for about another 30 minutes or so so that it can air dry some. We're gonna have to trim this a little because uh, I see silver skin here. And you want fat, that's what we love about prime rib. It gives it that moisture and that flavor, but the silver skin will prevent any of the butter spice concoction from permeating into the meat. So we're gonna wanna take this off. Plus that silver skin uh, makes it kind of chewy see we've got some right there it's not fat I don't know if you can tell but it's that silver skin see there's a little bit right down there too I do the same thing on ribs okay that looks pretty good for this side She's a beauty. I wonder if I should cut some of that fat off there. Just a little bit of it. There's an awful lot right down here. See, I cut that much off in there still quite a lot. All right, I'm gonna leave the rest of it. Because fat is where the flavor's at, right? Raw too. Ooh be softened just a little bit more but anyway you'll get the idea while that softens I'm gonna put a lot of garlic I said a lot and then these yummies garlic jalapeno Weber seasonings yum 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 more garlic garlic parmesan more what more garlic. Hatch chili. Does that have garlic in it? That has garlic in it too. Woohoo! We're excited now. And this is going to be a rub. Some people put olive oil all over this. I say, why not use butter? Much better. All right, we're going to mix that all up. Then we'll probably sprinkle some more seasonings because that's on top once I apply this. Because that is going to be our crust. 
Krusty Krusty, who doesn't like Krusty me? Not I. <laughs> I want a little crusty meat. We're going to stab it a little. This is so flimsy what I got going on here. <laughs> With the rack and the cheap aluminum. My thumb seems to work better. When the poking isn't working right with your tool, use these tools, your fingerlings. Just fingerling that meat. Yeah, that's working much better. Fingering the meat is the way to go. <laughs> Something's really wrong with me. <laughs> I need meat therapy. Mm -hmm. Well, this was a nice idea, but useless. <laughs> if the butter was hard, that would work. But we're doing it like this. Cram it in there, man. Cram it. Go gentle at first and then use force. It works better that way. This is kind of oddly satisfying. <laughs> oh. Woo! Fat cat's off the rails as usual. There's a little crevice here. Don't forget the crevices. See, there's a little crevice there. Lift it up. Smooth it in. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's going to be so doggone good. If you don't like my hands on your meat, then... I don't know, you got a problem. <laughs> and I can't help you with that. Okay. There that is. We'll flip her over. And do the top. And sticking the butter in the freezer for a little while would have helped this part. Not smearing it around on top, but at least getting it in the holes. Ooh, I'm dumb. double fingering. Whoa, who doesn't like that? When it's a mess, it's the best. Okay, we're ready to go out to the grill. So I put some regular black pepper on there. I'm going to put some more of this hatch chili. Oh, I just clean my hands. I don't want any more butterfingers. And some Parmesan garlic. Whoops. Helps if you turn it the right way. Just a pro tip there. This little torch. So perfect for this application. All right, so what I have in here, this is very full because I want this hot at first. I've got about that much, uh, that much of two thirds of regular 
briquettes, and then I've got some apple charcoal briquettes. All right, these should be hot enough. In here I have wood chips that have been soaking for about 30 minutes, applewood, a little bit of mesquite, and hickory. Vents wide open at first because I want it hot for about 30 minutes. Oops, I forgot one important part. You gotta have a little liquid in the bottom. I'm using a beer because that's what I got. You could put water or chicken broth. That's gonna help with our aju. some moisture it's been about 32 minutes let's take a look whoa baby look at that it's a good looking piece of meat so it says the temp is around 300 let's turn it around actually what we're going to do is take it off and add some more chips you thought I was going to grab that with my hands, didn't you? Let's see. Got that puppy. Okay, so now we want to turn it down. Close the vent about halfway. Down to here about halfway. Back here. Oh, no, that one doesn't move. <laughs> okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're at the one hour mark. Yo, oh, still seems pretty rare. I was going to stick this in. I don't think we're ready for that. Mm -mm. So I'm going to... Yeah, that's, that's rare. Yeah, because it was at like 225. I'm going to open these back up. We need full flames ahead. Full fire ahead, folks. Mm-hmm. We'll throttle. Okay, hour and a half point. 250. Still not really firm enough. firming up a little now. Still doesn't seem like it would be ready, but I'm going to stick it in anyway. Oh, wow, 
we got a long way to go. I want it at 120 and it's at about <laughs> 60 or 50. Holy moly. Okay. Time to put more coals on. We gotta we gotta get this game going here. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at it. Ooh. Right there. At, almost at 120. Okay. Damn, check it out. I had taken the prime rib off off the top of the pan and set the rack over here so all the fat drip. And we have a big old fire now. <laughs> right on. Get those taters done. Yeah, look at that. All right, I got to cover it. Let it rest for 20 minutes. Damn. We got that nice bark on there. That's what I wanted. All right, it's covered now. Let that sit there for about 20, 25 minutes. Oh, here's the test. It's been resting for almost 30 minutes. Oh, this is a bad angle with this, ca this camera in the way. All right, I'm going to do my best. Okay, semi-thick. Oh my gosh. I can just see the fat and the juices dripping. Oh yeah. Got that bark and cr Oh yes! Oh my gosh. It's about medium, medium rear right there, but that's the end. Oh yeah, he's going to be happy with that. I'm pleased with it. I already took the au jus over there. Because I can only carry so much. I mean, Lord, I'm plating, doing everything. He ain't doing nothing. And it, yes, it will get more rare in the middle here. Which he likes too. Medium, medium rare. He said, oh, yeah, that, that's a thing of freaking beauty right there. Wow. That's the money shot. Turned around this way. That's the money shot. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad. It's always nerve-wracking <laughs> when you're doing a big expensive piece of meat.